Hey, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, and subscribing to the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this doesn't work. Let's get open for business and let's wake up the football gods on this hump day. That's right. It's the middle of the week. Another week, I know, without football. But guys, girls, kids, we are 120 days, 11 hours, 43 minutes, and 20 seconds away from kickoff of the 2019 season. And guys, girls, if you are not getting excited, I don't know what to tell you. So we are hearing that the Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott are close. Well, that was the initial reports on a deal that's somewhere around the number of $13 million. But Jane Slater says, pump the brakes just a little bit on that here. A team source tells me that they're very comfortable with Dak Prescott um, as our future, but a deal with the quarterback is not what they would describe as close. I'm told that the Cowboys presented his agent with their first offer and currently await a counter offer. So it's still a negotiation stage, and it may be one of those things that the Cowboys and Dak and stuff say, look, you know what, I'm going to be here a long time. What's the difference between, you know, 29, 30, 31 million? You know, let's just split the difference and go about our ways and be done with this. On a side note, we're hearing that Carson Wentz and the Eagles, this is actually, I am, I am absolutely positively surprised because this is the first time I've heard this statement from any other team about any other team other than the Dallas Cowboys. But the Eagles say that they're open to doing Carson Wentz's deal um, if the price is right and that he needs to take a team-friendly deal. Now, Carson Wentz, of course, had a much better contract than Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott, as of yet, has not never made over 680000 in one season. Let me say that again. Has not made over 680000 in one season. Whew. Um... Yeah, uh, to put that in perspective, Aaron Rodgers makes basically $2 million a game. Uh, yeah, but Carson Wentz's deal, he actually has the fifth-year op option, so the Eagles technically have two years left on his deal. They don't have to do anything until really next year. But next year, his salary balloons to about $22.5 million. So, you know, their problem is... When we think about our situation where we have about $90 million of cap space next year, they don't have so much. And they have a lot of aging players that they're going to need to replace. So that's where they really and truly need a team-friendly deal to be able to keep uh, rolling at their current rate. But enough about them. Zeke Elliott. Zeke Elliott has completely changed the narrative on himself. Zeke Elliott has become an above and beyond outstanding citizen. Sadly, this eighth grade uh, student that went to his high school, um, who was apparently already getting college offers, uh, he was a phenom in football, was killed by a stray bullet, and Zeke Elliott ended up paying for the funeral for for the player, for for the youth. Um, that's one of those situations that we wish that he was never in a position to have to do that, but we applaud him for doing that. And that's another one of those deals that the Dallas Cowboys need to get done. And I still say that's one of those ones that need to be done sooner than later for the simple fact of it's better to go ahead and get him tied up now while he's still beasting out and I know people are pinching pennies and saying no keep him on those two-year deals no basically what you're going to do is just add two more years to his current deal give him a little bit of a raise and then that way you run the heck out of him the next four years if he ends up still standing you go ahead and give him another deal if not then you let him go but if you wait this year next year and then try and do a deal that's where you're going to have problems down the road and this is where you have to be forward thinking about contracts because you're looking at the money and stuff today and equating it what it's going to be tomorrow. Understand, when you talk about paying Dak Prescott $30 million today, which sounds like a lot today, but next year, 
35 is going to be the norm of quarterbacks. But the cap will rise up. But if you lock him in now at that thirty million, and the cap rises up, and you're not having to pay him anymore, and then the next year the cap rises up, the percentage that you're spending on the quarterback is being reduced each year. Understand that next year the cap will be two hundred million dollars, and you're only paying your quarterback thirty. Two more years from that, it's going to be two hundred and twenty million dollars. So that's where you're going to get that extra space. And you're also going to have other players that you're going to need to sign. But you've got your core group of guys. You've got D. Lowry taken care of. You get Dak taken care of. You get Zeke taken care of. And you get Amari Cooper taken care of. And Amari Cooper is wanting more than the $16 million the Cowboys are thinking of. Um, this is one thing that I'm not crazy about. And it seems like it's the way that Dallas Cowboys do business is they negotiate in the public side. We hear things that maybe we don't really need to know as far as it goes. And a lot of times you get things that are out there that make the player look bad to try and devalue them. When Des Bryant's contract, if you remember, there was all kinds of stuff that came out that, you know, there might be a video out there of Des Bryant that's 10 times worse than Ray Rice. You know, we heard stories about, you know, the police came to Des Bryant's house six times and it turned out all this stuff was just bullshit. And of course there was never an apology. And with D-Law, you heard the same thing. Well, we had it set in our mind that it was going to be one number, and now he wants more. Well, of course he wants more. Who doesn't want more? When you go ask for a raise, are you saying, you know what, don't worry about it. Pay me below what everybody else is being paid. No. You want to get paid. You want to get compensated. You want to have that mantle of being the highest paid, even if it's only fleeting. Mari Cooper, when you think about it, the Cowboys were interested in signing Sammy Watkins, I believe it was last year, who ended up signing for $16 million. Um, I think he had all of 500 some yards. Des Bryant's deal was going to be a $16 million cap hit the last year he was here. Um, you look at Odell Beckham. Odell Beckham's at 18. Um, I think a Antonio Brown, I think, is at 16-something. But there's a little bit of a difference there between Odell and Antonio Brown. And quite frankly, if you take the averages of what Odell Beckham has done in his career, Odell Beckham's numbers and Amari Cooper's are really about the same. And Odell has had some issues staying healthy the last couple of years. Oh, and then there's that kind of me, 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 me thing, that kind of team killer, and as well as Antonio Brown. Now, for me and my money, who would I take? Amari Cooper, Antonio Brown, or Odell Beckham? I'm taking Amari Cooper every day. And keep in mind one other thing, too, about Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper doesn't turn 25 until next month. He is young. He's motivated, and he's happy. And he's quiet. He's so, so quiet. He's not a mouth. You don't have to worry about what he's going to post on Instagram or what he's going to tweet out. He comes in. He does his work. And he's low-key about it. And i got to say that I think that that is actually a really good, good thing. So that's where we are with the Joe Blue Sports Report. You're up to speed with everything that is the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, thus far, um, keep our fingers crossed. We've had no injuries. Sean Lee is looking good. Jason Witten is looking good. Travis Frederick is looking great. 
So pieces that we didn't have really available last year are looking like they're going to be available, and that is one hell of a bonus. And, uh, oh, and you look at Tyron Smith. Oh, my God. Be afraid out there. Be very afraid. I'm Mark Holmes, and I'll see you guys soon.